All right, guys. So this is a five-inch um, light, light dish DJI build that I put together here. I've had this, I've been flying this around for a few weeks now. Just haven't got around to uh, putting a video together. I've had this frame for a quite a while, at least a couple of months, and um, uh, I put the name of it right here on the screen. I think it's called the Papaleo frame, I believe. It's just a pretty generic five inch frame. It's actually made for the DJI air unit. And so there's actually a 3D printed part here in the center that holds the air unit. But I decided to, you know, build it sort of lighter and decided to build it with the Vista air unit instead and with a DJI camera here in the front. And I um, just kind of slapped together a bunch of parts that I wanted to throw in here that are sort of on the lighter side to make a sort of lightish five inch build. And so the motors that I chose were the One's from Diatone, the Mambo. Uh, these are the 2204, 2450 kV motors, pretty lightweight, and uh, they can take these gem fan uh, floppy properties. This is the folding five inch props. I'll talk about this here a little bit later. Um, the power system here is the all in one 30 by 30 flight controller board from iFlight. Uh, this is the one I pulled from the Titan DC-2, I believe. Or, yeah, I think it's called the DC-2. So, as I mentioned previously in those older videos, that, that this is like a 30 amp, I believe, uh, all in a flight controller. It's kind of overkill for like a 2, two to 2.5 inch-ish quad. So I thought that this would be more appropriate for a light-ish 5 inch. So, and this frame takes obviously takes a 30 by 30 and so it fits nicely in there. And I kind of didn't use like a lot of parts like the carbon side plates here for the camera. I made my own little um, TPU mount for the DJI camera. And I just mounted the Vista here in the back. There's a nice little 20 by 20 mount point for that. And then uh, just made a little mount here in the back for the uh, Cadex antenna. So overall, it's fairly light. So this is how much it's coming in at. Um, no battery, of course. This is fully built at you know, 265 grams. So it's not like an ultralight or anything like that, but it's definitely on the lighter side. And this is not built to be like a freestyle drone or racing drone. This is more like a kind of a cruising drone uh, for longer flight times. And so I kind of went for a different approach here and um, started to use these new outline uh, Lithium ion packs. This is a 4S, uh, 2000 milliamp hour lithium ion pack. So you can see it's very low C rating. So you're not going to get a lot of punch out, especially on this motor. Uh, very low KV. This is so this is more for efficiency. So um, let's show you what this weighs with the battery as well. Yeah, so altogether with the battery, it's 460 grams. And then the battery by itself is 194 grams. So the battery almost weighs as much as the quad. So you can definitely find other frames out there that are gonna be probably even lighter than this. And um, in terms of like um, you know, different motors you can get, you know, I think there's the ones from FPV Cycle, which I'll be putting on a different build in the future. I have those as well. Those are the uh, 2203 motors. Those have a different mounting pattern. These use um, uh, M3 screws here. I think these are 16 by 16. And then I think the ones from FPV Cycle use the 12 millimeter M2 screw. So kind of a totally different setup there, but it, it does still use the standard five, mil, uh, five millimeter shaft for these sort of regular props. So that's why that's gonna go into something. I think that one might be even lighter than this frame here. So uh, that's a frame that, well, I'll talk about that in a future video. It's like a special design that I collaborated with with Ladrone Club on. That's gonna be in a future video. So I'm not gonna talk about that here, but yeah, I'm kind of experimenting and looking for like lighter five inch uh, setups here. Not necessarily to go under the 250 gram limit, but just like more lighter setups that are going to be more efficient because you can get a lighter five inch setup with a five inch prop. Um, you can get more efficiency out of this setup than say a four inch. So five inch because of the bigger prop, you know, obviously with the different motor weight, KV and all that, those are all factors. 
you can make a more efficient quad uh, from a five inch setup than a four inch setup. That's why I kind of experiment with this. I know that right now the everyone's really into the four inch ultra light or lightweight micro long range quads, but I'm kind of like, well, you know, I think the next logical step here is to go to like a five inch lightweight setup and see what kind of efficiency and flight times you can get. Now I didn't really do any long flight time tests. I just kind of um, you know, kind of messing around with this this pack here. This is probably not the best pack for something if you want to do like um, longer flights because this is only 2000 milliamp hours. So I had to even part charges the whole way up. So you'll see that in the flight demo. It's like mm, like 90% charged and I didn't even discharge it all the way either. So you can you can take these down to a very low voltage. And that's how you can get a longer flight time. So thinking like um, I'm, I'm going to be getting some 4S lithium ion packs from Flywu pretty soon. I think those are going to be closer to 3000 milliamp hours. And then those are probably the better ones to get for like really, really long flights. But this one here will just give you a sort of an idea. Um, of course, you know, this, this will be cheaper probably than the other ones from Flywu. So the more capacity batteries that you buy, the probably the more expensive they're going to get. But if you're just looking for like, you know, cruising or something like this on a five inch, this is going to give you minimum 10 minutes, if not longer. Um, yeah. If you any, if there's any guesses as to how long this will actually run, if you if you've got a battery like this and a setup like this, let me know down in the comments below. Curious uh, how long your efficient flights have been on this sort of setup. Anyway, so this is probably going to be just like the first of a bunch of videos I'm going to be coming out with. Um, that's going to be featuring lighter five inch setups for just cruising around and longer flight times. So um, you'll be seeing more of this one later in sort of comparisons to other builds I'm be putting together. This is just sort of um, uh, sort of a baseline model that I kind of want to put together. You know, you know, uh, these aren't really outrageously exotic motors or an exotic frame. Um, this is kind of sort of off the shelf stuff here. This also if you can just buy a Banggood or race day quads and put together. And I think this frame is fairly inexpensive too. Uh, $25, $22, something like that. Um, not, not too expensive, but it's, you know, it's kind of run of the mill. It doesn't look too different. Um, but one thing that I, I did want to let you know is that, um, the frame here that uh, comes stock comes with taller standoffs, uh, in the front and the back. And so I use the, uh, I use, I use the shorter standoffs from the middle here on the end and then I, I bought some extra 20 millimeter standoffs for the center part here so i think the ones on the ends are 25 millimeters um and then the, the ones before here were like 30 millimeters it's like, so basically the top deck here was five millimeters up so i wanted to sort of slam it down a little bit because I, obviously there's plenty of clearance here i don't with this while i'm on board you don't need you don't need um a very tall deck and then this is more in line with the prop lines so the CG is better with this big battery up here. So that's why I did that. That's why it looks a bit different than what the stock is. So basically you'll just need to source some 20 millimeter standoffs, I believe, for the four in the center. And then you just put the four that were in the center on the ends, I think. Then you get this basically this uh, setup here where it's kind of slammed down. Anyway, you'll see more videos on this one a little bit later. I have, I have I've kind of got some interesting plans on building even lighter um five inch uh like dgi drones similar to this but kind of different so that it's kind of hard to explain because you'll have to wait to, <laughs> you'll have to wait until i bring out the videos and you'll see what i mean when, when you actually watch those videos um i'm going to be doing more things with folding props because I, I like this sort of compact you know footprint here um so i know that some of you guys don't like folding props i actually absolutely love folding props in general um, especially the ones from Fox here, those seem to work really well for me. I know that doesn't work well for everybody, but I like them a lot. Now, the ones here from Gemfan, you know, I have no issues with Gemfan props. I think they're great props, but the way that they designed their folding mechanism, it's much more, I don't know, there's more friction here in the blade and it isn't as free moving as it is on the dowel prop. That may or may not be a good thing. I haven't really noticed anything too different. 
it's hard to say unless you're really using this for something like racing then you're going to kind of see some big differences but for cruising around it's it really is i don't think it makes a whole lot of difference which folding prop you use but if you're a serious racer i kind of question why you would be using folding props anyway because i don't think that this the folding prop is not necessarily a good application for racing um but if you you know if you feel like that it is i uh, would love to know why let me know down in the comments below but for like you know my style of flying kind of just cruising around and uh, you know not you know not really like pushing the motor too much you know, it doesn't really i don't think it really matters which folding prop you get now in terms of like the performance differences there's a little bit more pitch on the gem fan and the way the blade is shaped so you get just a touch more power um compared to the to the to the uh one from fox ear the dow prop but i think this one is a little bit less efficient so the differences are again super minor i mean you're barely going to tell it be able to tell the difference the sound is a little bit different as well especially at full throttle but again um it, you know, I actually listened to the actual sound recorded on my phone, uh, and I couldn't tell the difference. Even though live, you can you can you can kind of hear some slight differences, but on the recorded audio, you couldn't really notice a whole lot of differences. Anyway, that's all I can say in terms of like the differences on the two different props right now. As I continue to use them, I may have some further insights later. But if you're just using them for just basic cruising around flying which is what I think these are fine for, then I don't think it matters a whole lot. So just get whichever's cheaper. Anyway, here's the flight footage for this guy, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. So I'm running the uh, 4S lithium-ion pack from our line on this flight. I wanted to see how it would perform. Yeah, this is a low power system. This is mainly for cruising, so it should be all right. It should be really efficient. I, I didn't even charge the battery all the way up to the like 16.3 or 4 or something volts right now. Bring the new gem fan floppy properties. I'm going to see if we have any jello or anything like that. It looks okay. Looks smooth. I don't think I would do any freestyle or uh, racing with these 2204 motors. They're pretty low end, but they're lightweight. Again, this is pretty much meant for cruising. So not that much voltage I considering I'm running lithium ion cells. It's surprising. Thought there would be a little bit more voltage side, but not much. But I am running pretty uh, low current here because I'm not really pushing it. So if you you know if you're not pushing the cells too much, they're gonna give you a much longer flight, which is the whole point of using these uh, lithium ion cells. I was a little skeptical. I didn't think that this would fly all that well. I thought there would be a huge voltage lag, but not at all. The 
fact, I have a feeling this is going to be like a super long flight, and I'm cooking here in the sun, so I'm going to be ending this flight pretty soon. I just wanted to give you guys a taste of what this would be like. I'm sure the flight time, we're already at three minutes, still 16 volts. I can go all the way down to probably 14 pretty safely. Yeah. So this, on this, what is it, 2000 milliamp hour 4S lithium ion pack? <laughs> uh, gosh. Probably, I guess is six to seven minutes of flight pretty easily not way more than that. I mean, it's, it's, the voltage is dropping really slowly. So this is a pretty efficient system. If you want to build some of this for your long range, I think I might add, uh, actually do that, add um, GPS to this and to turn this into a long range system. If you're just doing like cruising around like this is no problem. Four minutes, 15.7 volts. Pretty remarkable, actually. Quite remarkable. Yeah, this is really quiet too. You can barely hear it. Let's just see what the full throttle punch out does here. Yeah, there's the voltage tag. You go full throttle. And it doesn't really do much. The RPM doesn't really go up that much, but the, the, the recovery is pretty decent. Still 15.5 in the recovery. So. Yeah, I, again, I wouldn't do racing or freestyle with this, but yeah, perfect for cruising this setup here. Anyway, I'm going to end the flight here as I am uh, burning up. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.